I think Governor Romney maybe uh, hasn't spent enough time looking at how our military works. You, you mentioned the Navy, for example, and that we have fewer ships than we did in 1916. Well, Governor, we also have fewer horses and bayonets because the nature of our military has changed. We have these things called aircraft carriers where planes land on them. We have these ships that go underwater, nuclear submarines. And so the question is not uh, a game of battleship where we're counting ships, it's, it's what are our capabilities? And so when I sit down with the Secretary of the Navy and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, we determine how are we gonna be best able to meet all of our defense needs in a way that also keeps faith with our troops, that also makes sure that our veterans have uh, the kind of support that they need when they come home. And that is not reflected in the kind of budget that you're putting forward because it just doesn't work. All right. And you know, we visited the website quite a bit and it still doesn't work. A lot to cover, I'd like. I'd like. Dr. Jill Stein, Green Party presidential candidate on this issue of military spending. Yeah, well, I, I think they've both made the case for us that the numbers just don't add up. We cannot continue spending a trillion dollars a year on this bloated military industrial security complex without having to really pay the price here at home. And they're talking about you know, a balanced budget. They're talking about needing to educate our students. You know, let's look at where that money is going. We are spending trillions every year, not only on the bloated military budget, but on the wars for oil as part of that, as well as the bailouts for Wall Street and tax breaks for the very wealthy. And unfortunately, we don't see either of these candidates, not the Democrats and not the Republicans, really changing any of those really serious problems. Right now, the Federal Reserve is again bailing out Wall Street effectively for the fourth time. This is the third quantitative easing on top of the TARP program, which was 700 billion, but that 700 billion under George Bush has become many, many trillions under Barack Obama. So these bailouts continue. And now we're doing a quantitative easing to the tune of $40 billion every month, again, to bail out the banks. It's time to be breaking up the big banks and bailing out the students instead. They've got it the other way around. They're breaking up the students and bailing out the banks, and we need to put an end to that. Likewise, we are squandering a, a trillions of dollars over the coming decade on a massive, wasteful health insurance, private health insurance bureaucracy. And the alternative to austerity is actually moving to a Medicare for all single payer system, which makes austerity unnecessary. So in fact, by moving to a single payer Medicare for all system, we get a system that people are happy with, that they love and want to defend from government tampering in fact, and that system covers everyone comprehensively, puts you back in charge of your health care, and in addition, it actually saves us trillions over the coming decade, equivalent to that austerity plan that they were talking about. And the way it does that is by changing what we have right now is 30% of every health care dollar is being spent on bureaucracy, red tape, and paper pushing. Under Medicare, that 30% shrinks down to 2 to 3%. That's enough to cover everybody. And, and, and we deserve that. Now, in addition, under Medicare for All, this health care inflation, which is going like this uh, on the curve of expenses over time, much faster, it's inflating much faster than a uh, inflation in the economy. But what happens when you move to a Medicare for All system is that that hyperinflation in healthcare with your premiums and your co-pays going up practically every month, that 
is put an end to. So we go back to uh, an inflation level like the level of the economy, and that saves us trillions of dollars over the coming decade. So these are the ways that we should be spending our tax dollars, not on the military, but on what we need here at home. And by conserving those dollars, instead of squandering them, we can actually spend them on the things that we need, on bailing out the students, and on creating public higher education, which is free, tuition free, the way that it should be. Justice Party uh, presidential candidate, former Salt Lake City Mayor Rocky Anderson. Well, we've heard another great example of how the Republican and Democratic candidates for president, just like their cohorts in Congress, are basically one and the same in terms of their corporatism and their militarism. It's just a matter of degree. President Obama is bragging about increasing military spending these last four years. Well, this is how it works. The F-22 weapons program, Republicans and Democrats alike tried to keep it alive, even though the Secretary of Defense said it's an outmoded system, we've never used it, we're not going to use it. Billions of dollars going into the system just for maintenance and repair. And it was Republicans and Democrats fighting for continued funding. And then you wonder, why would they do that? It's because the general contractor for that weapons system, they know what they're doing when it comes to Congress, they put in place contractors or subcontractors in 44 different states. So you had Dianne Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, and the Republican from Utah's first congressional district all fighting for continued funding because they wanted to take the bacon back home so they could brag about it when they run the next time. That is treasonous conduct when people are looking out for their own political interests and hammering the American people, especially when there are so many unmet needs in this country. Mitt Romney is one of the greatest flim flam man's, men of all time. He says we're going to start with a $16 trillion debt, we're going to give everybody a 20% tax cut, and then we're going to do away with some deductions, but have you noticed he's never identified what those deductions are going to be? Well, the studies say, uh, people have taken a look at this, really, even if he did away with mortgage deductions and charitable deductions, which he's not likely to do, if you take all of those deductions you can't give more than 4% in tax cuts without adding to our deficit, so there is no way that he could meet anywhere near these promises of balancing the budget. Instead, we would see more like we saw under the Reagan and the second Bush administrations with record deficits with these Republican presidents. Now, in terms of jobs, our employers in this country are at a huge competitive disadvantage with their competitors overseas because we are the only nation in the entire developed world that doesn't provide insurance coverage for everyone and we're paying more than twice the average of the rest of the industrialized world and we're getting far worse medical outcomes. More than 70% of the American people and majority of doctors during the health care debate said they wanted to see a single payer Medicare for all system in place and this president wouldn't even let the proposal see the light of day because he, like the rest of the members in Congress, with the exception of a handful, who were courageous enough, at least for a while, to stand up against the corrupting money, they caved in to the for-profit insurance industry and the pharmaceutical companies. And once again, we end up getting shafted, the American people. Again, we can't stand for it anymore. We need to send the message. There are going to be political consequences every time the corporate sector wins out over the interests of the American people. We return to debate moderator.